Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be tackling another 3D printed statue. Uh, this is the first one that I've actually printed out myself. It's uh, Black Chrysanthemum by Star Wars 3D Models. I've printed it in 1-6 scale and I had pretty much no issues with it. Um, it came together fairly well. The only problem I've had is one of the pieces has actually cracked. Now, I'm pretty new to this 3D modeling, so I'm not entirely sure why that happened. I'm reprinting this piece as we speak, but hopefully everything else will, will stay together and we won't get too many more issues. So this is what it's going to look like. I printed out a little mini version of him uh, to give you an idea. Try and focus. So yeah, so it's a brilliant, fantastic pose. Sorry about this. There we go. Uh, it's a fantastic pose. He's looking nice and mean and angry. Uh, it should be a fantastic model once it's all put together. So I think how I'm going to tackle this, I'm going to do it. I think in five parts. I'm going to put the base together and all the details. So that's one part. Um, I'm going to do the gun, the lower body and then the upper body. Um, actually, sorry, that's four parts, I can't even count. Um, and I think, yeah, I'll keep those four sections separate, paint them all up, and then do a final assembly. Uh, so I'll just zoom in a little bit, give you a bit more detail. As I say, it's a very nice sculpt. Oh, fantastic detail. Um, a couple of separate pieces for the base here, a couple of rocks. And then we've got um, some smoke and more rocks. The rifle. And the lower body. So the next stage is to sand this all down and get it nice and prepped. And then glue, I'm just going to use a two-part epoxy and um, hopefully that should stick it together so once I've got it into its basic components I'll come back and show you. Okay so those sections are now all glued up. I've also taken some time to just do a couple of primer coats on the base and the gun. And so if we can take a look at the main body. There's a few gaps to fill uh, around sort of where the braids are, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, give you a sense of the scale when he's on here. Glue the gun together and just put a black primer over it. It was more just to see um, how the paint sticks to it, really. Um, I did the, uh, just because I ha happen to have a gold primer, um, so I haven't attached that piece just for ease of painting. I just sprayed that gold. And the legs attached to the base. They're not actually uh, glued on yet. Now, the base took a lot of work. I when I glued the four pieces together and then put the detail on top, there were so many gaps. But what I found um, a good way of t tidying up those gaps was to actually just take some printer resin and just pour it into the gap and then take a UV um, torch, shine it onto the, the resin and it dries within literally two or three seconds. So I think it's okay, as I said, I mean, you can still see some, a few of the gaps, but to be honest, the, the base was absolutely full of them, um, particularly around sort of the middle point, and you can't really see the gaps now. So I'm quite pleased with how that came out. Um, if I sort of flip it upside down, I mean, yeah, that's kind of how bad it was on the other side. Um, so I think, it, you know, I think it's turned out okay. I mean, obviously, black primer tends to hide gaps anyway. But I think, to be honest, once it's all painted up, the main focus is going to be the statue anyway. So I think I've just about got away with it. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with painting the base, I think. Get all that finished up. 
and then do the gun and then I'll tackle um, old Black Chrysanthemum last so first colour I'm going to use some Sandry Dust by Citadel I've got some white powder here fairly watered down I'm just going to cover all of the sand part While that first coat of sandry dust is drying, I'm going to go ahead and use Mechanica Standard Grey on all the flat rocks. Next I've mixed in Parasite Brown with a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange, just to give a kind of an orangey brown look. And I'm going to do the bigger rocks this colour. For the logo, I've just primed it in gold and then gone over it with a second coat of gold. Next one, I'm going to take some black wash, thin down a little bit uh, with a little bit of water, and I'm just going to run it over the whole thing just to darken down the gold. I'm now going to take some Liberator Gold, and I'm going to dry brush it across the logo uh, just to sort of bring up the colour a little bit. And here it is after the dry brushing. I also dry brushed a little bit of light silver over the edges as well. I think I'll call that done. So next stage is onto the washes. I'm going to do a black wash over the grey rocks. Uh, I'm going to do a brown wash over the orangey type of rocks. And then I'm going to do a mix of um, a kind of an orange shade and a uh, orangey yellow brownie sepia shade a combination of the two mix it up a little bit over the sand in between Dry brush and next, going to go over the rocks and sand with mixtures of greys and yellows. Dry brushing complete is now onto these couple of black bits here, which was actually smoke. So I'm just going to cover those over in white paint to start with. Next, I'm going to go over the smoke with a grey wash. Uh, contrast apothecary white is what I'm going to go with. Then I'll probably dry brush up the tops of the puffs of smoke, um, either probably a combination of a bit of white and grey. Then finally, going to paint the base rim black all the way around and glue the gold logo onto the front. And here's the base all finished. Looking at reference uh, pictures for the gun, it's pretty simple. It's pretty much pure black. So my plan for this is to go over the primer. Well, there's a black primer. It'll still need to be go over in proper paint. So obviously, overall coat of black paint. 
Uh, done a little bit of weathering with a bit of silver. There's a couple of buttons on the, the gun which are, are red, looking at the reference photos again. And then I'm just going to do a bit of edge highlighting around the tops of the gun, just in a few places, just to make it look a bit more interesting, really. Give it a bit more depth. And that's the gun all finished. I've put most of the highlights around the edges on where you're actually going to see it on the model. So it's actually going to be on his back facing upwards. So hopefully that will work. Okay. Next up is the lowest half of the body. So he's been primed in black for the time being. I'm going to go over that with um, a black just to fill in the bits where the primer didn't quite get underneath. Give it a nice solid coat. And then what I'm going to start doing is actually dry brushing him up a deep brown. Although he's cool black chrysanthemum, and looking at the reference photo, he's not actually black. He's more of a very dark brown. So, ready my paints. I found the darkest brown I got, uh, which happens to be Rhinox Hide. So I'll start dry brushing over him with that, bring up the colour a little bit. And then looking again at reference photo, he's actually got a lot of, he's got a lot of grey, a lot of white on him, particularly on his thighs. So I will dry brush up the thighs of the model um, to try and match that colour. And then finally it'll just be taking a look at his uh, toes and toenails, painting those up, and then that should be it. So hopefully this should be a fairly quick and straightforward thing to do. Let's see how it goes. That's the legs all done. So I try to do a bit of light, almost grey white on the thighs. Picked out the odd bits here and there, different shades of brown. I did the did the skin on the toes and his claws. Okay, and here's just a quick test of it onto the base now. Okay, so looking good so far. Um, I still have yet to even primer the top and I need to fill in some of the gaps. So that's the next stage and uh, once that's done we should be on the home straight. So Black Santin is all primed up and I filled in those gaps around the braids so that's come out pretty nicely really. So I need to obviously match, colour match him to the legs. So I'll carry on with the same steps I did before. I'll just be dry brushing um, a combination of blacks, browns, and greys. I'll then pick out more of the details using the reference photo because I know he's got a lot of grey and white around his face. Uh, so I'll, I'll make sure to pick that out. And then of course it's just a case of doing all the gold trim on him, doing his armour plates. I'll use the same techniques that I did with the logo, a uh, combination of washes, dry brushing, edge highlighting, and then of course the, the more fiddly details around his teeth, uh, his tongue, his open mouth, his nose, and his eyes. Um, and that shouldn't be too difficult at this scale, but we'll see how it goes. The details around the face I'm doing a much more careful um, it's not a dry brush it's, it's it's kind of in between regular brushing and a dry brush um, just to try and match the actual details of of the face there quick progress update I've put in the gray around the face uh, I've marked in the mouth and the gums and he's actually got a little bit of a scar on the top of his head so I've done that and I've just grayed in the eyes temporarily I'm going to move on to the gold next. I'm going to do the um, shoulder pads in a slightly darker colour of gold to what I'm going to do the straps around his chest just to sort of differentiate a little bit. 
Um, the, the, the goals I got aren't massively different in tone, but I think it'll add a little bit to it. Quick progress, I've done a bit more with the face. I've painted in the skin on the nose, around the lips. I've painted um, his hands, the skin on his hands. Uh, done a bit more of the gold. To be honest, I was getting bored painting things gold. But what I'm gonna do next, I've actually noticed looking at the reference, the pictures a bit more. He's actually got some brown leather on him. So he's got a, he's got a little bag on the back here. Um, so I'm going to paint that browns, uh, do sort of leather effects. And also in between his actual belts on his chest and, and on his waist, they look to me like they're leather straps with gold sort of those pouches around. So it's obviously a lot easier to paint the deepest recesses and work your way up. So those sort of gaps in between those pouches there go all the way around him. I'm going to paint those in uh, a kind of a, a mid-tone brown. I'm going to go with, what have we got here? Mournfang brown. Quick update, all the gold is now painted with base coat and a wash gone over the top of it. The gold took a little while to do, there's, there's quite a lot of pieces around him. And the problem with gold paint of course is it's quite thin, so you have to do at least two layers, sometimes three. But it's uh, looking a bit messy at the moment because obviously the wash has gone over it, but what we'll do is the dry brushing stages will now bring that gold back up to a nicer shine. Really, the, the black wash going over it is just to kind of bring in the definition around the actual details there, as we can see there. Okay, onto the dry brush and the gold. And that's the gold all tidied up, looking much better now. So it's just a combination of dry brushing over with a couple of lighter couple of golds, and then a final um, dry brush with silver, just to give it that little sparkle here and there just to break up the gold a little bit and as you can see I've still still got the definition still got the detail in the recesses but also tidied up the gold and got a bit more interest to it now something that a lot of YouTube uh, painters don't show is all their mistakes and I have managed to cover his fur in quite a bit of gold this is the problem with dry brushing. It's not a very, um, what's the word, delicate process. So yeah, I got a lot of tidy nuts to do now. But never mind, I knew that was gonna be the case. I've also, because of that reason as well, I didn't actually do the leather straps in the end. I decided to leave that because I just knew I'd obviously cover everything over. So next stage now, tidy up the fur. Put those, uh, do a couple of browns for the leather straps going around him. I've still got to paint in the eyes. Um, I have done the teeth and the nose. I might put a wash over the the, the nose and the, the gums and the lips. I'm not sure yet at this stage because it doesn't look too bad. I also need to actually paint the gold on, on his knuckle dusters because I haven't actually done that really. Uh, so we're, get, we're getting there, we're getting there. Not long now. So the next update, um, I have done painted in the eyes. They don't look too bad, I don't think. I've done a few highlights around the nose, around the lips. I have finished the all the gold, including the gold knuckle, uh, knuckle dusters, although I hate to say I finished, I've yet to highlight them. And I have done all the leather straps around his chest and around his back but again I've got to go in and do a little bit of dry brush just to make it look a bit more leather like one thing I have actually done which I didn't show before is he's got a little little pouch here to keep his sandwiches in presumably I've done that 
a com combination of different browns and I've tried to sort of do patchwork on it to try and make it look slightly more beaten and leather looking. So I think what I'm going to do now, I reckon I'm probably going to spend about maybe just an hour just going around the model, touching up a few bits, doing a couple of highlights here and there. I've tidied up the fur, I think I've pretty much fixed all the bits that were had the gold overspill on them. Uh, but I'm just going to yeah do, do a few more highlights here and there and I think probably I'll call it done. The, the highlights I'm going to do now, to be honest with you, are the sort of things that you're not going to see when it's up on a shelf. But because I'm a maniac I just can't help myself and I have to try and do these things. Um, so yes, let's then of course all I've got to do is glue the whole thing together. Um, I'm not going to use two part epoxy. I've got, I, I didn't get on with it to be honest. Um, so I've got this stuff instead now. Contact adhesive from Gorilla. So I'll give that a, a bash. And hopefully, it says it, it um, dries pretty quickly. What, what I found with the Gorilla Glue epoxy, uh, two part epoxy, is it just, it just took forever to dry. So, yeah, then I'm going to go with that stuff and we'll see how we get on. Yeah, that stuff was so much easier to use than what I was doing before. Here he is, all glued up, looking pretty good. So, I'm going to have to wait until it's daylight outside so I can uh, spray him with a sealant. And then it'll be final assembly. And here is the final reveal. So he's all finished now, he's all glued into place. And he's looking pretty good. So I just measured him, and so from the bottom of the base to the top of his gun, uh, he's around 12 inches high, pretty much bang on. So he's, he's not the tallest statue in the world, and that's at one six scale. Even though he is obviously a very tall character, he is crouched forward. Um, so because of that, he you know does shrink down in size a little bit. In some ways, I kind of wish he didn't because he, he has less of an impact when he stood next to other statues. You kind of miss the size of him a little bit. I mean, I, I, the scale I think is, is correct. Um, as I said, it's, it's just how he's posed. But yeah, I think he's come out pretty nicely. I'm pretty pleased with it really. Just spin him around. Details of the gun. So that's that pouch at the back there. My only other criticism I would have is where they've placed the logo, you would assume that you know that's the centre of the model. But if you use that as the centre, he's looking to the side too much. I kind of like my statues to always be more face on, uh, but if you turn them face on, then then the logo is now skew if. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's just a personal preference, really. I would have preferred it had it been a bit more centred to him. So, in terms of this uh, 3D print, he wasn't the easiest. To put together, I'll be honest, there was a lot of gap filling, there is a lot of pieces involved, it's quite a complex model. I think for my next one I'm going to try something a lot simpler, um, but it, he's he's nice, it's, the design is fantastic, I, I can't, cannot fault the design. There's a few other statues that they've also produced that have similar type of bases, all the bounty hunters, so I'm looking forward to doing a couple of more in the future, and I think you know, as a set they'll, they'll look really nice together. So I think, as uh, I say, the, the next uh, next one I'm going to do is going to be something a little bit simpler. Um, I've already printed it off and I will give you a slight clue as to what it may be. Hmm. Any ideas, anyone? We'll just have to stay tuned to find out. So, one last thing to do. We have got to find this guy at home. So I've moved a couple of things around in my cabinet. And I'm going to stick him here next to Cad Bane, the other 3D printed model I recently completed. 
I've moved Greedo over to sit next to Walrus Man. And this is where he's going to live for the time being. And he gets to join some of the other gentle giant pieces that I've got in the collection. And he fits right in there. Alright, thanks everyone. That's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.